Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome back to today's Bible study. Today is Monday, August 7th, 2023. It is 9.02 a.m. Eastern. And I'm so happy to be back with everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I pray everyone had a wonderful weekend. I did. And I pray everyone had a wonderful weekend as well. I pray that you did something good, pampered yourself, something refreshing. So Allison, what's, um, what's our reading for today? We are up to Luke chapter 2. So once again, for those of you who may have missed last week, or those of you who are new, um, thank you for joining. We are actually reading the last book that we have to cover in the New Testament before we have read the New Testament from beginning to end. So I'm so excited about that. I'm very pleased. So um, we're up to Luke chapter two. Like I said, I'm going to stick with the Amplified translation. For those of you that are um, have subscribed or do look at my YouTube channel, I'm just about at the end of the book of Revelation, but I'm so far behind because I still have to upload Mark. I have the book of Acts I haven't uploaded. So I'm still several books behind in uploading our Bible study sessions on the YouTube channel, but I do have a significant, it's, I've actually reached over 200. So I actually, good morning, Carrie. I have over 200 videos uploaded on YouTube now, and I'm still books behind what we've done because we are next month, we're coming up on our two year mark of doing this. So I still have Mark to upload. Like I said, I have the book of Acts to upload. I forget how many books that we've finished. I haven't uploaded Proverbs, Psalms. I only uploaded a couple out of Proverbs and a couple out of Psalms. So I'm hundreds of videos behind on the YouTube channel. But anyway, today we're up to Luke chapter two. I'm going to stick with the Amplified translation. And um, I don't have notes, but something did occur to me as I was um, listening to this this morning. Um, so we'll see. I pray that it comes back to my remembrance. So I can share it with you. All right. So let's pray because this is actually a long chapter. And I honestly don't feel like breaking this up into two because that just increases the number of videos that I have to upload. So I'm going to press through and this is 52 verses this morning. We're going to read all 52 verses. All right. Because every time I split it, that just adds yet another video that I have to upload. And seeing as how I'm literally over 100 videos behind, um, it's a lot of work. And the other thing is that uh, I've got to start to go live on YouTube so I won't be so far behind. Good morning, Kimberly. You know, I ordered this tripod to hold my iPad so that I could do YouTube live in the morning as well. But they sent it with the wrong part. So I have to see if I can get them to send the right part because it's not it's not big enough. It won't hold the iPad. So when I get that settled, then we'll go live on on a third platform. All right. But in the meantime, oh, wait, before I start, Kimberly, we're still going. Believe it or not, we are still going strong. Look, I just have to stop and show Kimberly my flowers and I need all of you to see my beautiful flowers. Thanks to Kimberly. Can you imagine, Kimberly? We are into what month eighth, and I still ha I, this is going to take me through October. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I so appreciate it. All right, let's get into Luke chapter two in the Amplified translation. The title here is the first section is Jesus's birth in Bethlehem followed by Jesus presented at the temple, followed by return to Nazareth, visit to Jerusalem. All right? Like I said, I'm going to press through. We're going to do all 52 verses this morning. Let's pray and let's get into it. Oh, thank you so much. All right, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you so much for waking us up this morning, Lord. I thank you for the gift of sweet sleep, Lord. I thank you that I sleep well from the minute I put my head on that pillow to the time I wake up. I got, God, I pray that you will bless all of us with sweet sleep, that we will wake up restored, refreshed, and revived each and every morning, Lord. Father, I pray that you will continue to keep your hand upon our lives, make your face shine upon us, be gracious unto us. Father, I pray that 
that you will just bless us with grace, goodness, favor, and mercy all the days of our lives. Bless the works of our hands. Bless our children, our grandchildren, our bloodlines, maternal and paternal, from the oldest to the youngest. Father, may you bless us. May you get a hold of each and every person in our family members, Lord God, in our families, rather, Lord. I pray that you will orchestrate our footsteps, Father, for anybody that is backslidden, anybody that is in a state of rebellion, those who have turned away from you, don't want anything to do with you. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will minister to them, send somebody into their lives that will speak a word, change their hearts, Father, soften their hearts, that they will turn their hearts back to you, give their lives to you, Lord. Father, I ask for a fresh a downpouring and an out pouring a download of wisdom, revelation, insight, foresight, knowledge, oh God. Father, open up our minds, open up our hearts to receive. Father, give us clarity of your word. Father, cause us to see things in your word today that we've never seen before. Father, give us a fresh word to speak to other people that we will be able to speak life and uplift other people that we will change their days. Father, let us not be shy in sharing our testimonies and our love for you with other people, oh Lord. Father, let us be blessed to be a blessing to others, God. I pray that you will bless us with creative ideas, witty inventions, inventions, new businesses, new streams of income, Father, everything that we have need of, Lord, that you know what those needs are. Those of us that need a physical healing, Lord, I pray that you will touch us from the tops of our heads to the soles of our feet. Father, we come against diabetes, high blood, high blood pressure, cancer and every other infirmity that is trying to uh, get a hold of our bodies. Lord, heal us, Father, set us free that we may run our race to serve you well. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Father, I pray for the connection today, that the connection will remain stable, that it will not drop, that we will be able to read your word and hear it, understand it without any interruptions or disturbances this morning, Lord. Father, once again, I just thank you for each and every person that is on here with me live. Lengthen their days, oh God. Father, I thank you for each and every person and the households that will be represented watching the replay. Father, I thank you and I pray that we will all gather here tomorrow to read the next chapter. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Okay. So wait, one second before I get into this. I don't want to forget. So... I, did I tell you guys about this watermelon juice that I'm doing? Amazing. If you haven't tried it before the watermelon season ends, get yourself some watermelon juice and just try it. I'm going to photograph it. I juiced, a t I, look, I bought a 22 and a 27 pound watermelon this weekend. I bought two watermelons. I juiced the 22 pound watermelon yesterday. And I'm saying this only because they're supposed to be extremely healthy. And so we need our bodies to be healthy to continue to run this race. We need men we need mental clarity and focus. We need agility, mobility, right? So I'm trying to heal my body. I'm trying to get my body in tip top shape. I need my organs to function at 100% capacity. I need my, my energy level to escalate and go through the roof where it used to be, right? So I'm saying this not to interrupt the we reading of God's word, but God has work for us to do. And we can't do it if we're bound in the bed and bound sick and going through all kinds of infirmities in our bodies, right? We can't, we can't run this race. We can't go out and preach the word. We can't do what God has called us to do if we're stuck in the house sick. And I'm speaking to myself. So I realized that I needed to make changes in my diet in order to get my energy level and my focus, my mental clarity, and get back in a position of prayer and my posture of prayer and every place I was. I've got to get back to that. All right, so I am now being proactive and I am doing that through an, an extreme change in my diet. And you will be able to see it as, it, it, you know, as, as my energy goes through the roof, I will be able to testify of what happens when you clear the junk out of your diet so that we can fulfill the assignments that God has for each and every one of us. All right, I just had to throw that in there. Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. Now, in those days, a decree went out from the emperor, Caesar Augustus, that all the in inhabited world, the Roman Empire, should be registered in a census. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to register for the census, each to his own city. So Joseph also went up from Galilee to the city of Nazareth to Judea to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the family of David. 
in order to register with Mary, who was betrothed to him and was with child. While they were there in Bethlehem, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her son, her firstborn. And she wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no private room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were shepherds staying out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord flashed and shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For this day in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior." who is Christ the Lord, the Messiah. And this will be a sign for you by which you will recognize him. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. manger. Then suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, angelic army, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among men with whom he is well pleased. May God be well pleased with each and every one of us. Verse 15, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying one to another, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby, capital B, as he lay in a manger. And when they had seen this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were astounded and wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these things, giving careful thought to them and pondering them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. Jesus presented at the temple, verse 21. At the end of eight days, he was to be circumcised. He was named Jesus and given to him by the, oh, I'm sorry, the name given to him by the angel Gabriel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time for their purification came, that is the mother's purification and the baby's dedication, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, set apart as the firstborn, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy, set apart and dedicated to the Lord. And they came also to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord to be appropriate for a family of modest means, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, carefully observing the divine law and looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him and had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's, the Lord's Christ, the Messiah, the anointed. Pro that was verse 26 just to make note. Verse 27, prompted by the spirit, he came into the temple enclosure. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him the custom required by the law, Simeon took him into his arms and blessed him and praised and thanked God and said, now, Lord, you are releasing your bond servant to leave this world in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, to disclose what was previously unknown and to bring the praise and honor and glory of your people, Israel. 33. And his legal father and his mother were amazed at what was said about him. Simeon blessed him and said to Mary, his mother, listen carefully. This child is appointed and destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and for a sign that is to be opposed and a sword of deep sorrow will pierce through your own soul so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. That's 35. 36, there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old and had lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow, 
to the age of 84. She did not leave the area of the temple, but was serving and worshiping night and day with fastings and prayers. She too came up at that very moment and began praising and giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him, capital H, to all who were looking for the redemption and deliverance of Jerusalem. Return to Nazareth, verse 39. And when they had done everything in connection with Jesus's birth, according to the law of the Lord, they went back to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child continued to grow and become, become strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace, favor, and spiritual blessing of God was upon him. Visit to Jerusalem, verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year for the Passover feast. And he, when, when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. And as they were returning to Nazareth, after spending the required number of days at the feast, the boy, Jesus, remained behind him in Jerusalem remained behind in Jerusalem. Now his parents did not know this, but supposed him to be in the caravan and traveled the day's journey. And then they began searching anxiously for him among their relatives and acquaintances. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem looking for him everywhere. 46. Three days later, Three days. Three days later, they found him in the court of the temple, sitting among the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. All who heard him were amazed by his intelligence and his understanding and his answers. When they saw him, they were overwhelmed and said to his and, and his mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Listen, your father and I have been greatly distressed and anxiously looking for you. And he answered, why did you have to look for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down to Nazareth with them and, and was continually submissive and obedient to them. And his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus, Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men. And that concludes... Luke chapter two in the Amplified Bible. Amen and amen. And good morning on Instagram. Good morning again to everybody on Facebook. Um, okay, wait, we have a lot of footnotes. Yes? Yes. Okay, the footnotes started here, verse one. And verse one. Now in those days, a decree went out from the emperor Augustus Caesar. That's the first footnote that all the inhabited world, the Roman Empire, should be registered in a census. That's the second footnote. Okay, and our footnotes say to us, Augustus, Rome's first and possibly greatest emperor, was born Gaius Octavius in 63 BC. He was the great nephew, adopted son, and heir of dictator Julius Caesar. Under Augustus's intelligent leadership 27 BC through AD 14, Rome entered the period of peace and prosperity known as Pax Romana or Romana. Okay, so the second footnote here, this was the first general census conducted outside Rome that included the people of the Roman provinces. All right, next footnote here, verse seven. Let's start at six. While they were there in Bethlehem, the time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths. That's the first footnote for swaddling. And the second one is, and she laid him in a manger. The foot, second footnote is for the manger because there was no private room for them at the inn. And so it tells us, this was customary among the Jews and quite comfortable and protective for the baby. This is the swaddling of the baby. Wrapping the baby in strips of cloth was intended to strengthen the back and the bones for good growth. Who knew? I'm telling you, there's always a nugget. All right. So then the second footnote here says a, a feeding trough for animals. And that is referring to... The manger. 
Okay, next footnote. Now who thought, like we still swaddle, they still swaddle the babies in the hospital, right? And we swaddle the infants when we brought them home. That's just, I, that's just what we know to do, right? But think about that. They were really doing it to strengthen, not just to protect the baby, but to strengthen the back of the baby. I didn't know that. My daughter is a, um, a baby nurse. I have to ask her if she knew the origin of that. Okay. Next footnote, verse 10. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. So the footnote is here for he, the reference is for all the people. And it says Gentiles as well as Jews. Next footnote 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and this man was righteous and devout carefully observing the divine law and looking for the consolation of Israel. So that's what the footnote here is regarding the consolation of Israel. And it says a messianic title. Verse 27. Prompted by the spirit, he came into the temple enclosure and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him the custom required by the law. So the footnote here is for him doing the requirement, fulfilling the requirement or the custom of the law. It says here, the offering of turtle doves as a sacrifice. 34. 34 reads, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, listen carefully, this child is appointed and destined. Listen to this. This child is appointed and destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel. And for a sign, the footnote reference here is for the sign that is to be opposed. Let me just read 30, 35 to you. And a sword of deep sorrow will pierce through your own soul. Can you imagine? Let's just stop here for a second. Can you imagine somebody prophesying this to you? Is really, but he's, he's forewarning her, right? He's telling her already, listen carefully. This child is appointed and destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and for a sign that is to be opposed. And a sword of deep sorrow will pierce through your own soul so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed The rejecting of the Messiah culminating in the crucifixion. Like your mind, you can't even wrap your mind around that, right? Like, thank goodness that what he said was vague. It was worrisome enough, right? Or concerning, or it would just cause me to think I have to be careful with my words. That's my own take on it. If somebody said that to me, I think I would be, you know, there would not be a day that went on that I did not ponder that. Okay, 43. I'm going to tie that back to a prophecy that was given to me. And I know you two have heard this before, but I'm going to share that with somebody, with other people. 43. Here we go. Let me back up to the beginning of the sentence. 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. And as they were returning to Nazareth. Okay, so the footnote here is for Nazareth. After spending the required number of days at the feast. The boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem. Nazareth of Galilee was about 65 miles north of Jerusalem. So they had to double back. Okay, 48. When they saw him, they were overwhelmed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Listen, your father, the footnote here is for father, your father, lowercase f, and I have been greatly distressed and anxiously looking for you. And it says here that Joseph was recognized as the legal father of Jesus. All right. And our last footnote here is verse 49. And he answered, why did you have to look for me? That seems like some kind of question, right? For your child, your child is missing. You're maybe, you know, I don't know how many miles away they are, but this, he's only 12. He's a minor, right? By our standards today, he's a minor. He's missing. They've got a caravan of people. And then he says, why did you have to look for me? Why would I not come looking for you? 
would be my question, right? I'm responsible for you. You are my child. You're my son. Why would I not come looking for you? And he says, why did you have to look for me? Did you not know that I had to be in my father's house? Did you not know I had to be about my father's business? Right now, if you put that into today's terms, right, or a conversation that we would have with a 12 year old today and a 12 year old says something like that to me. Why did you have to look for me? Number one, I'm your mother and that's my job. That's my responsibility. Number two, did you not know I had to be in my father's house? Now, how many people would say, don't get smart with me? Right. Isn't that the reaction that most parents would have? Like, right. Don't, don't, don't get fresh. All right. Um, it says, or occupied with my father's business. I just happen to love it. Don't you know? Let me pull up the King James that I needed. To, I had to be about my father's business. Yes, here it is in the King James. And he said unto them, let me go back to 48. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, son, why that, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Did there, I can imagine you discover that your 12 year old is missing and you're miles away from where, you don't even know at what point he got lost, right? And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Don't you know what my assignment and my calling is? Surely you should have known this, right? I would have said to my child, don't get fresh with me, right? After I'm all frantic looking for you, I got to double back. And now that's that's your response. All right, here we go. So as we were reading, what did I write down in my notes? Okay, so let's see. Where's Anna? I'm amazed by Anna. That's what struck me this morning when I was listening to this. And I've, I've heard of Anna, Anna's story before, right? Um, I wrote down 26. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death. Oh, this is Simeon. Before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now imagine this. Imagine again this prophecy, somebody telling you, don't worry, you will not die before X, Y, and Z happens. Right? So as I was saying, I was going to share this testimony with you. I had been given this prophetic word years ago that something was going to happen. I'm just telling you a little, giving you a glimpse into how my mind works. And when you prophesy things to me and, and tell me that something is going to happen, especially of a certain magnitude, I'm gonna, going to be expecting it. I'm going to be pondering it every day. I'm thinking about how is this going to manifest? When is this going to manifest? How, you know, I'm all in the details. And so I had gotten a prophetic word from my pastor at the time that says something was going to happen. And um, people would be saying, did you hear, did you hear about it? Did you, you know, hear? And he, he said, but don't worry. So here's the prophetic word. God, here was God giving me wisdom and con, um, confirmation and, you know, telling me not to worry beforehand. He said, like this man, he says, you should not see death. The prophetic word to me was don't worry. No lives would be lost. Right. But I knew from the way the word was given to me that people were going to be talking about it. It was going to be this great thing that I read is going to, was going to be saying, did you hear what happened? Did you hear what happened, Allison? Did you hear what happened? Right. But then nobody was going to die. And I never forgot this word. Did I never forgot it. And really not a day that went by that I did not think about this word because I was expecting something negative to happen where a potential loss of life could take place, but that it would not, that lives would be spared. Whoever's life, my life, my children, grandchildren, whoever, right? And so I sat with this expectation in my mind, trying to figure out how this was going to come to pass. And in my mind, I had come to the conclusion that there would be, that there was going to be this horrific car accident. Or, you know, a bad car accident that would make people say, did you hear, right? Because you don't talk about the regular fender bender, right? You don't talk about that. You talk about something 
when people are hurt. So I, in my mind, I had convinced myself that there was probably going to be this car accident, but nobody would perish. We'd all survive the car accident, but that's not what happened. The, the, the fulfillment of the prophetic word was that my house caught on fire and no lives were lost. So I say only that, I say all that to say, you know, so he was given this prophetic word here. He was told that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's birth. I would have been every day sitting in anticipation and expectation of this happening, right? And now this word was given to Mary about this um, this event that was going to like pierce her soul. I would be sitting there wondering every day, waiting, when is this going to happen? Trying in my, my, my little mind, trying to figure out what was going to happen, when, how, where, where was I going to be, right? Um, so that, that was my thought. 35. Okay, so 34. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. I'm sorry, I'm still here. I'm in the King James. I didn't flip back. Yea, a, a sword shall pass through thy own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts be revealed, may be revealed. Let me flip back over to the Amplified. Then we get down here to Anna, verse 36. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old and had lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage. So she only had the pleasure of being his wife for seven years. And then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. So she spent all many, many years as a widow. And it says she did not leave the area of the temple, but was serving and worshiping night and day with fastings and prayers. She lived this consecrated life, this life dedicated to worshiping and fasting in the temple, just praying, interceding. She too came up at the very moment and began praising and giving thanks to God and continued to speak of him to to all who were looking for the redemption and deliverance of Jerusalem. Now, when I think about this, she spent all these years as a widow in this temple, serving the Lord, worshiping night and day, fasting and praying. What I think about, what I think about is, can you imagine the revelation and the wisdom that this woman had? You cannot spend day and night, year after year after year, 365 days a year in the temple, Praying, fasting, and worshiping and not receive great wisdom and downloads from God just can't happen in my eyes. It just, that just can't be. She had to be so full and so powerful, right? The dedication, God had to reward her faithfulness. He had to speak to her. She's speaking to him. She's praying to him. She's worshiping him. He had to speak back. Right? You can't spend that amount of time in the presence of God and not get a download, not get a response, not get a prayer answered, not elevate. Right? Amazing. I just find that amazing. She dedicated the remainder of her life to him. She didn't come out of the temple. She didn't stop praying and fasting and worshiping. The wisdom... You know, and I'm try I'm trying to get through an hour or two of prayer. <laughs> All right, third that was uh, 36 37. Then I wrote down here 40. This is the return to Nazareth. And when they had done everything in connection with Jesus's birth according to the law of the Lord, they went back to Galilee to their own city Nazareth, and the child continued to grow and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace, favor and spiritual blessing of God was upon him. So when I read this, I just immediately for all of us thought of that as a prayer. That may we continue to grow and become strong in the spirit. May we be filled with wisdom and grace. May we experience the favor of God. May the favor of God and his blessings be upon us all the days of our lives. That's verse 40. That um that just struck me. That's really just what res resonated with me. 
You know, that's what we want to be. That's what I want to be. I want to be strong in the spirit. You know, I want to be wise. I want to be filled with wisdom. When I speak, I want to speak. I want to have power behind what I say. I want to not just talk, you know, speak to hear myself speak, right? Not just ramble aimlessly with no point. I was saying that to my sister. My sisters and I went to a um, birthday party this weekend and we drove in the car together, the three of us, and I was having a conversation with um, one of my sisters and I was just saying, you know, that um, when I speak on certain topics, I don't speak just to hear myself talk. I don't speak without having done my research. I don't speak to try to be an expert and be something that I'm not. But if I ask God to show me and lead me to information and I share what I have and what I know from my research to be true and people decide not to accept it and not to listen to it and not to take heed, that's on them, right? I can't get caught up and stop and let people deter me from doing what I need to do because I don't want, I told my sister, I was very serious about this. I said, I don't ever want God to say to me, but you knew and you did not tell. Right? You knew and you did not warn. That's not, that's not um, something I want to deal with. So, you know, I said to my sister, when I speak, believe that I have done my due diligence to the best of my ability on certain topics. If I'm going to open my mouth, I'm going to rest assured or feel confident in what I'm sharing. I don't share nonsense, you know? It's not the time and the day and the hour for the foolishness. And so that's my prayer for all of us, that we will continue to grow and become strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, that God's grace will be upon us, that we will walk in favor, miracles, signs, wonders, blessings, right? That's the point, you know, I don't have time for a whole lot of foolishness. Not that I don't love to laugh and, you know, joke with everybody else, but we are in, I feel like we're in the end times and we don't have a whole lot of time to um, get it right and, and stay right and help other people who were lost. You know, I posted this story for those of you that are on Instagram and um, YouTube that haven't seen don't have the opportunity to see it. I posted the story yesterday. Very tragic story of this little boy, this little 10-year-old boy um, shot his mom because she wouldn't buy him a head, virtual reality headset. And now he's going to be tried as an adult at 10. He doesn't even have the ability to understand what he did, but they have decided that he's he's able to be capable to be Tried as an adult at 10, your brain is not fully developed until 24, 25, 26, right? How do you hold a 10 year old who shot the mom and then told the grandmother, I'm sorry for, you know, killing your daughter, but did my package arrive? That's just not normal, right? So anyway, I say that to say, we're living in crazy times and um, we have to really stay prayed up and, you know, pray for, pray for other people. All right. Anyway, I, I want to be more like Anna. I want to be more consecrated and more devout in my um my prayer life and my and living a fasted life. You know, I think that's what it calls for the things that are going on. We have really have to be um sharp. Our discernment has to be up. We have to start connecting the dots. People, I'm telling you, and I haven't been on this on a, in a while, but people are not connecting the dots. And it's getting um is is getting critical. What they what they have in store. Malaria. Why is malaria and leprosy in Florida? We don't see that, right? We gotta be asking why is malaria in Texas? I believe malaria is in Texas and then malaria and leprosy are in Florida. How'd that happen? Ask God for wisdom. Ask God to cause the right information to come 
across your desk, across your phone, across your iPad, across your laptop. It's got to reveal these things to us. This is how we have to position ourselves. This is how we have to move in these days and times. I'm telling you, it's critical. I keep my, I'm telling you, I keep my finger on the pulse of so much that is going on. <laughs> And I don't, I only know a small fraction, half the stuff that my kids, they tell me, I'm like, I don't even know about that. But, um, you know, there's a little section, a segment of information that I am trying to stay on top of to the best of my ability. And he who has an ear, let him hear. He who doesn't want to hear, you know, it could be very costly for those of us that that don't want to take heed. But above everything, we have to stay in the word of God and know what God says and have um, a line of communication over with, open with God and the Holy Spirit at all times. Keep our ears and eyes open, right? Because that's really what we have to depend on. We have to depend on God, depend on the Word of God, and depend on the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to lead us, to guide us. Right? That's where that's where we have to put our our faith, our hope, and our trust in God. You know, it's nice that I come across this information, but at the end of the day, I I need God. I need God to move. I need the protection of God. I need the Holy Spirit. I need his wisdom, his guidance, right? So information is good. We need the information. God gives us the information. We have to take heed, but we have to know who our source is. We have to know who our protector is. We have to know who our provider is, that God is our source. God is our protector. And that's where I put my faith, hope, and trust. And I just ask him to lead and guide me to the right information that I will have enough sense to take heed and, and govern myself accordingly. Didn't know I was going there this morning. It's been a long time since I've done that. But anyway, you all, family, have a wonderful day. I love, once again, Kimberly, thank you so much for my flowers. I love them so much. Um, they really bless me. It, you know, did I do better, cousin, on not shaking my table today? I did look at, I was watching some videos this weekend and I did notice that every time I, I'm over here fidgeting, I do make my flowers shake. So I, I'm sitting back from my desk today that my legs, that every time I readjust my legs that I'm not shaking the flowers. All right, I had, I'm, thank you for pointing that out because I, I have to do better about that. I, I wasn't conscious of it. I didn't really notice that. But anyway, thanks for the heads up because now I know to sit back away from the desk so that everything will not shake and be main, remain stable. With that, I'm going to say, everyone, have a wonderful day. Grace and peace. May your day be marked by miracle signs and wonders. May your prayers be answered. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube at the end of the video, um, over my head here, you will see my profile picture. If you click on my profile picture or tap my profile picture, you should see a subscribe button. I ask that you subscribe to my channel. Help us share the word of God with the world. It is the time for people to um, get into, press into the word of God. And if you look over this shoulder at the end of the video, you will see... Um, a video card that will link and take you to Luke chapter three. All right, this was a blessing. I enjoyed this chapter today. And this just, you know, Anna just reminds me to stay on my post. And even when I feel tired and lazy, that I cannot skip my, my time in prayer. If she can pray 365 days a year, we can get through a good solid, at least 30 minutes, right? All right, everybody have a wonderful day. See you in the morning for Luke chapter three. Bye.